Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to Iris Koto. <clears throat> Today, we're going to show you one movie and one PowerPoint presentation, just to give you an idea of how the Koto system works. And I think after that, we'll have a question and answer time. So we might roll with the movie first. Uh, what we're going to show you is a Rimbun and Kasse project. Some may have heard of the Rimbun and Kasse project. Uh, this is about reversing poverty. It's about housing, food, security, and job creation. This is a program that's an uh, Iris Koto uh, development, and it's been terribly successful, 100% successful, and we'd like to share this with you, and then we'll go into a PowerPoint presentation and an answer and question. Here we go. So, <clears throat> that was to give you an idea, the speed of construction. As you saw <clears throat> in the Rimbun and Kasse projects, 104 homes, about nine, uh, nine support buildings like community centre, stalls, um, school, for a whole community. <clears throat> and fisheries, uh, vegetables, fruit, chickens, as a complete community. So this is our reversing poverty program called Rimbun and Kasse. <clears throat> the, the, the thing to express here is the speed. Now some of our Rimbun and Kasses on this very large scale of 50 hectares, it only takes us 100 days to complete everything. <clears throat> the government then selects people to put them in whereby we train them. After training, one person is de designated a job. So that person must attend uh, from poverty, go straight into employment, a salary, and this is uh, our process of Rimbun and Kasse reversing poverty. Now, <clears throat> that gives you the basic fundamental ideas, but it doesn't stop there, because the Koto system can be not only for affordable housing, or low-cost housing as some people call it, it can be for medium market, multi-storey, up to 64 storeys. But there are different techniques that we deploy in obtaining these. So what we'll do now is roll into uh, the next um, PowerPoint presentation and 
<coughs> to give you a fundamental idea how the Kodo system works. <coughs> what we need to do <coughs> in our ever-changing world today, and I'm sure everybody understands what I mean by our ever-changing world, we need to be able to build faster. We need to build smarter. We need to be able to build with energy efficiency. And we need to be very conscious of our environment. And this is what the Kodo system is all about in a repeatable, repeatable program. <clears throat> if we make some comparisons with conventional construction, you'll see that there's quite a few benefits. In the dead load weight of conventional construction, we are looking at about 3,200 kilograms per cubic meter. And in a Kodo system, 320 to 390 kilograms per cubic meter. So why do I say 320 to 390? Because this can also qualify for seismic, up to zone four earthquake, and cyclonic wind speeds of 70 meters per second. <coughs> Is conventional insulated? No, it's not. But the Kodo system comes insulated. So this is going to save you a tremendous amount of money every month on your uh, energy bills for uh, air conditioning. If you were living in a cold climate, it would save you tremendous amounts on heating. <clears throat> conventional, very intensive labor. Kodo is very simple, as you saw, and very fast. Piling is required for conventional, rarely required for Koto. <clears throat> okay, we have a, a, a method of slabs so that engineers can safely and quickly uh, sign off on slabs that are very, very efficient. And <clears throat> multi-story capability, yes and yes. Resistance to cracking, no and excellent. Waterproofing. Well, that would be subject to the contractor and his work practices. And in our case, it is a waterproof system. Uh, performance and high wind speed. Well, we've seen many of the cases in seismic and high wind speed of conventional construction, and we've seen the damage that results. Okay. And in the performance of Coda, it performs extraordinarily well in both seismic and cyclonic wind speeds. If we compare the comparison of conventional and Kodo with steel, <coughs> that's the amount of quantity of steel that we would use in Kodo as opposed to conventional. If we compare the concrete, that is the comparison in concrete. If we start to look at our air conditioning, our air conditioning, our Tanaga bill always costs us money at the end of the month. And if we can see here, this would be the normal air conditioner we would deploy in a conventional construction. And this would be the size of the air conditioner in a Koto construction. If we look at an average three bedroom home, two bathroom, 95 square meter, you would only need a one kilowatt air conditioner. Whereas in conventional, you would possibly need around 10 kilowatt. So the savings are significant. Okay, if we look at the mass comparison of kilogram per square meter, it speaks for itself. The graph speaks for itself. In our Kodo system, this is the mass. If you have a masonry hollow block, mass. Clay brick or solid concrete, this is the mass. So, in cyclonic wind speeds, it's very, very easy to manipulate the engineering. And in fact, the engineering dynamics can be changed within 30 seconds from an affordable house in a low-cost environment to a cyclonic environment. Within 30 seconds, you can change the engineering dynamics. Now, we're all familiar with this one here, 
We've seen it so often around our country, our beautiful country, Malaysia. <clears throat> but this is a different way of doing a column and a beam. The column and the beam can come to you pre-painted. And inside is where you place the steel and pour the concrete. It's really that simple. You then pull in the beam and the connection takes place without fixings. And that's very important in, in today because often where failure begins in many, many uh, uh, methods of construction, it's often the fixing. Kodo does not rely on fixings. It's the methodology that helps overcome those problems. <clears throat> if we look at the waste comparison, I've seen, I'm sure you've all seen this on conventional construction sites. <clears throat> and this is about the type of the waste you would see on, on a Koto site. <clears throat> so, what is a professional engineer going to engineer with Koto? In fact, what he's going to engineer is still a column and beam. So, column and beam has been around for 200 years. So, it's nothing new, it's just the methodology that has changed, and the engineer still uh, engineers professionally on columns and beams. <clears throat> if we take away the cosmetics, so here, th here is the panel that is in the test rig at the serum laboratories, and if we take away those cosmetics, this is what the engineer is going to engineer inside. Now, if we're in a non-cyclonic condition, we don't need half of these columns in here. And the beams can be reduced. And all this can be done within 30 seconds. <clears throat> so this is what an engineer will engineer in uh, zone 4 seismic conditions or high wind speed. <clears throat> well, this is a description. Maybe I'll just let you read that for a moment for yourself. That gives you a very, very simple description of how the system works. All clear? All clear? Okay. <clears throat> what a professional engineer is also engineering is our method for foundations. Our method for foundations is by using a pod. Now in Western countries such as Australia, 67% of the construction is carried out with pods. Why use a pod for a foundation system? Well, it's because it means that this here is very accurate. And once the pods are laid out, a spacer goes in between, and that means the steel will be in the correct place every time. And if it rains tonight, there is no backfilling of uh, mud into the trenches, which means that you have to dig it out the next day. So the efficiency is, is very, very fast and very efficient. <clears throat> if we look at this, we can see the spacer down in here, which separates a network of beams running north and south and east and west. <clears throat> and here is the steel in between the pods. So the network of beams running north and south, east and west, creates the network of beams which connects to the outside thickened edge beam. <clears throat> so I'll bring that up for you and we can see what's happening. So here, this connects to the thickened edge beam. Now this method here, that is a very fine piece of stainless steel uh, a stainless uh, mesh with a stainless steel clamp. We put these around the plumbing pipes because for a termite to enter into a building, that's usually the first place of entry for a termite. So this prohibits a termite from coming into your building. Now, incidentally, there is no nutriment inside a Koto building system for a termite, but the termite doesn't know that if there is a passage up near your plumbing. So this overcomes the problems of termites. So it's a very simple process, but more importantly, 
we are not putting chemicals into the ground. Now, the starter bars are included in here, okay, and we use a power float to polish off the top of the concrete. This is actually quite normal in many countries, but in Malaysia we're yet to encourage more and more people to use this idea because, you know, it saves cracking of tiles in the future. Often we have seen in conventional construction a topping, and the topping gives away, that means that the tiles end up cracking and it becomes a headache for everybody. So what are some of the other applications where you can use it, not just for affordable housing? Well, you can use it for upmarket housing. So this is a very high-end home, a beautiful home indeed. So the same building system can be used for your upmarket housing, just the same as your affordable housing. The only difference is the finish. So if we apply marble or granite, we are finding that we have upmarket housing. If we have plaster and paint, we have affordable housing. That's basically how it works. <clears throat> These homes here, uh, Iris Koto constructed in Malacca, uh, in Kuala Lipis. This home here completed in 27 days. Inside, there are no columns and beams exposed as you would normally see. So 27 days, this building is completed. And the cost is well under 300,000 ringgit. Now, I'm sure that most of you know here that if you go to a home like this, 330 square minute, uh, meters, you'd be paying about 1.4 million. So it gives you an idea that it is very, very cost effective. <clears throat> you can build it in situations like this. And incidentally, this is actually built on a mountainside with about 65 degrees. So we have no piling because if we have piling, we will destroy the environment to, to put in the piles, to install the piles. So what do we do? We use a screw pile. We screw into the environment. We anchor it back into the back here, okay, into the here. Place our formwork, which is a Kodo flooring system, and we build off the top of this on an elevated site. Now these buildings here are very upmarket in Langkawi. And they rent out for about 1,600 per night. So they're, they're very, very, uh, very, very nice buildings with all the green around them, the monkeys, the squirrels, uh, which is what people are hiring them out for. <clears throat> this is the results in Lokawi in Sabah. Once again, see the comparison here. They are in remote locations. So this means that you can transport the Kodo building materials very easily to remote locations. And we have more examples of that. In this case here, we have anchored this into the forest, anchored this in to the side of the forest with screw piles. <clears throat> Up market, columns and beams. The columns and beams in this house here were installed in five hours. A column and beam of this nature, 10 minutes. Just to give you an idea of the speed of construction. So, then we advance to our Koto Cure program, <clears throat> or in this case, uh, in Malaysia, the Iris Koto Rimbun and Kasse. Housing, food security, and job creation. This is in Malacca, here. This is in Kuala Lipis, where these programs are running, amongst other places. In fact, we are doing one of these in every state of Malaysia. So, what we like to do is to change people's lives from this to this. And this is happening now, and we are very, very proud of our Rimbun and Kasse projects, of what we are doing. <clears throat> so, it could also be from this, to this. In Sabah, we carried out 26 schools, 
30 teachers' houses in the most remote locations you could ever dream of, no transport, have to ship down by boat, some by helicopter, and as a consequence, 25 schools, 30 houses completed in four months. Why? Because the efficiency. <clears throat> Here we have done a CSR program for bomber, for fire victims. Uh, a lot of people now have changed from using conventional construction for birds houses. This birds house here, 70 by 24 by three stories high, completed in just 21 days in a remote location. Strangely enough, the birds seem to know a lot more than what we do. Because in conventional construction, the birds would fly in and out before they nest for about eight weeks. And in here, the birds are nesting in one week. So the birds are very, very comfortable in this type of environment. <clears throat> then we get into elegant housing, affordable housing, and there's no limitation, as you can see, on design. And these are previous products that we've completed in other countries. And we have thousands of these, but I can't show you them all. <clears throat> and very soon we'll be putting in China uh, flo our floating houses on the lakes. The reason for the floating houses is to encapsulate more real estate on the lake. So this gives more, more room for the developer to be ima have imagination. <clears throat> and the floating houses can be on uh, rotating on water or that moves up and down, or on static water. They can float uh, in, 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 in any position of a tidal. And even in cyclonic, we have a method of, of uh, securing these into cyclonic uh, wind speeds. Also, fences. Fences are the fastest fence you could poss possibly ever dream of um, because <coughs> they can be erected hundreds of kilometres in, in very short spaces of time. So the people who run with fences, they will find this incredibly easy to do and incredibly fast. So, <coughs> we can just summarise that the Kodo system is actually very easy to install. It is insulated, so therefore it's going to save you money. It can be completed well before schedule. It is ideal for remote locations. There is a minimum amount of concrete used, a minimum amount of steel used, and yet we still ac achieve uh, beyond the building code for our structural stability and structural strengths. <clears throat> so with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I don't want to keep you uh, bored all day but gives you an idea of the benefits of the Iris Koto building system manufactured right here in Malaysia, in West Malaysia, in Sabah, and very soon in Sarawak. Thank you so much to Mr. Kane okay. for the wonderful, amazing Iris Koto building system. It seems to be very eco-friendly as well. So we still have some time that if you do have any questions from the ground, you might need to visit the booth. any questions from the ground? Uh, yes, please. The cane, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's the dura durability of the panels? Because I went to, I think I saw the sample uh, in Iris HQ office. It's a thin layer. But what's the durability like? Durability. I first uh, in invented this in 1974. And it's a, uh, it's a composite material. It's been out there for now for 39 years. And uh, we've never had one failure yet. And we're not talking about three or four buildings. We're talking about thousands of buildings. So the composite is a mineral base, but obviously I can't go into the ingredients with you because that's the intellectual property. And it is fiber reinforced. So in the, in the, it's manufactured on what we call a processing line. It's a little bit like a Coca-Cola bottle factory. Um, a Coca-Cola bottle factory, as you know, the, the bottle comes in, the, the ingredients go inside, the labels come on, and on goes the screw cap and out it goes into the market. Well, this is done exactly the same. Now, what you saw over there is only one of the panels. 
there are a variety of panels to, to suit seismic conditions and you can lay them in different ways. So what you're seeing there today, uh, which we invite everybody incidentally after here to come up to the booth right at the end with Iris Koto and have a look. Now this is only one panel. We have flooring systems, roofing systems, column and beam systems and various sizes. For example, in our Korean factory, we have uh, panels that are 350 wide to 400. Why? Because Korea has minus 20 degrees sometimes. And so this gives them more insulation where they can have a very small heater. So inside is reinforced concrete. So your engineer will decide for you, an engineer, how many columns need to be filled, where the bond beams will go, because the bond beam at the top connects through your column and connects to your edge beam at the bottom to give you the diaphragm construction. Within 30 seconds, you can change that into a shear wall. Into a shear wall by simply having every panel that goes in as a bond beam panel. You have all these options of open to you, and quite frankly, until you use it, you really can't appreciate the benefits. Now, I've just come back from the Philippines installing housing for the military uh, in seismic and high wind speed regions for the military. They were just amazed at what we can create from beams to columns instantly, within seconds. And guess, guess what? No fixings. Everything interlocks together as an integrated system. So, does that answer your question? Sorry, what I mean is, uh, is it uh, mainly on the finishing? Yeah. Durability. Is it as good as, uh, say, plastered wall? Oh, with far wall? superior. Far superior than plaster because uh, one of the problems with plaster is that you never know where the sand comes from. You never know how clean it is. You never know if anyone wets the wall. Maybe they don't even have water. This is applied by a machine in a factory controlled environment. So it, it, every square millimeter is exactly the same. Now, let me also uh, tell you that the fiber coating that you see has a very, very good MOR. In fact, the, the MPA rating is 12 MPA. So it has a huge flexibility, so it's a structural material. But we do not take that uh, composite into effect, into effect for the engineering. We only engineer the columns and the beams and the connections. That's all we do. So um, it will never fail you. It has never delaminated in 39 years in all types of environments. I originally come from a cyclonic region. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, friends of mine have used uh, my housing system in 294 kilometer per hour winds. Nobody's ever had a failure. Nobody's ever had a delamination. And again, we're talking mega thousands of projects. Okay?